today I'm going to be showing you our Hitachi S3400N microscope for scanning electron microscopy equipped with an Oxford EDAC system. I'm going to begin today by showing you the uh, higher magnification modes available on the system and uh, I'll just turn that over to the screen. Thank you. Here we have the machine on an aperture setting of four, which is the smallest aperture for highest resolution that's available on it. As you can see, the maximum magnification at this resolution is 65 times. Uh, this is in fast or television type mode. If I put it on slow mode, it gives you an idea of the um, crispness of the image in the slow magnification setting. Turning it up. We'll go to 100 times auto setting, 1,000 times auto setting. Do a little focusing. Zooming in now more. 4,000, 5,000, 10,000. That's on fast mode, as I said. Um, this over here. Back to slow, turning up the contrast, adjusting the brightness a little. It brings out some of the fine detail. These are coated silica beads with various different types of materials on them. Again, back to fast mode. Zoom in on this fellow here. A little bit of focus, back to slow. Typically, we only use this microscope up to about 30,000 times magnification. Uh, in the neighboring vicinity down the hallway, we have a field emission microscope that's suitable for higher magnification. So. This machine was bought primarily for biological samples. It has a variable pressure mold that allows you to operate it on low vacuum with things that are damp or in various states of, uh, of moistness. It won't do full environmental, but it is capable of doing imaging up to about 30,000. The machine is rated up to 300,000. I will try to take it closer to the 100,000 range for you today, but. I'm going to just pause at this point and do some adjusting. Playing the recording again, this is approximately 50,000. Now this is at 20 kV. This sample is not heavily coated with um, electron materials. Sorry. This is not heavily coated with gold in terms of electron transmission. So it's not the best sample for doing up to 100,000 times. This is about as far as I take this machine normally. Um, you can see that the focus gets a little softer in this range, but it still is capable of going higher. The technicians at Hitachi tell me that if you're gonna stretch it out into the 100,000 to $300,000 range, you may have to spend several hours doing alignments on it in order to get it to that point. Now dialing back from this, um, I'm going to take it back more to the $30,000 or 30,000 times range. You can see that it's um, improving in resolution at this point, 25,000. Um, certainly when you can take it back to the, uh, you know, in the 15 to 20,000 range, it's actually doing quite a beautiful job here. So that's its function in the in the general ranges of magnification that it uses. We'll snap a quick image here. Now I have the probe current set fairly low so that we can get resolution at the higher settings. I'm going to readjust it for the normal probe current that we run it on is generally around 50. And I'll take it back to an aperture of three for standard imaging that we do most situations. So this will be a little bit noisy 
at this kind of resolution unless we bump up the um, kilovolt settings a little higher. And I'll pause the video there. Starting the video again, you can see that taking it down to an aperture three and a bulb current of 50 is quite bright. Here's your auto brightness and auto contrast setting. A little bit of focus. And you can see by the movement that when we change these settings, I'm going to have to do a little bit of alignment on the machine, which is quite normal. So bear with me. Okay, there we are this, at an aperture of three with a setting of probe current 50 and a kilovolt of 20, trying to get some higher resolution. Um, we'll go a little lower on this, so 14,000 range. How about the brightness a wee bit? And there's the operations in this range. Pause that again. I'm going to dial that down, put that back in fast mode, I'll show you around 5,000, a little brighter, and hit the auto brightness. Pump up a little contrast there, put it in slow mode. And then taking it all the way down in fast mode, you can see at aperture setting of three, the lowest you can go on here. Again, about 65 times magnification. Taking that back up, we'll focus. Focus. Contrast there. Bring out those features again. Put it back in slow. Surface is back up around 20,000 there. Okay, we'll pause that for a moment and step down a little. Okay, here we have it at five. Uh, KV with a probe current setting of 50 at 10,000 times magnification on fast mode. Again, at slow mode, I'm working quite closely to the beam at this point, so you're going to see some depth of focus issues with the focus dropping off in the beads that are further away from the beam point. If I were to put that back in fast mode and we move this back out to perhaps 15, Give it a minute. Turn our magnification down once we get there. So you can see the stage movement is displayed on here and you'll see the countdown to the setting that you've established if you type in the working distance to match that. Oops. Should be starting to come into focus a little bit more focus. We've got a little bit of drip that's happened there. So I'm just going to move this over here. We set the brightness. We establish the focus. You can start to see that more of the beads in the background start to come into focus a little better. And again, you can drop this as far as I believe 55 if you wanted to. We'll try it at 25. I have it set right now to focus length. So the working distance, as you can see, is changing alongside with the stage height. It won't be perfect when we get there, but it will be close. Focus. Zoom in 
and as you move out, you're losing a few electrons, so it's a bit of a trade-off when you have things that are quite three-dimensional like this. But we can put it in small mode. So working at the lower magnification tends to give you the surface texture a little bit better. So I come out here onto a carbon onto this crack here, you can kind of see how um, surface features come out a little better when you're on the lower node like this. Oops. Not really meant for higher magnification imaging. Again, you would want to go with a lower probe current and higher kilovolt settings. So. This is really meant more for lower range kind of imaging, 2,000 times. Have a little bit of charging artifact. This is a borrowed sample. Okay, so we'll pause that there and I'll switch to another setting. Okay, I'm back to 15 kilovolts right now. Um, just wanted to show you a bit of the stage operations. The stage is capable of moving in any increment that you like to enter in there. Um, we can move, have an auto move um, back and forth to different locations. Should land exactly where we started from. We have a trackball on the table that we can use for stage motion. So I'll just demonstrate that that's working. And then you can also double click on the diagram here of your stage and move around in that mode. I don't know, I've probably gone right off the sample now, but. Uh, there is a stage history setting that you can use to navigate. Um, so you can program, you can get your navigation history. You can also go into stage memory. Sorry, I believe that that's crashing right now. I'd just like to briefly show you the sample holders that we have available. There's a multi sample holder with six positions that can be programmed into the stage positions. Uh, we have a snap holder that can hold things vertically, it can also hold larger objects like rocks. Um, just a general large sample holder and our single sample holder for the small stubs, uh, generally the press and click 15 millimeter, are what we use. Um, so those are all available. We have a toolbox which has a full complement of brand new filaments for the machine and a number of apertures are available in there. I have just changed the um, strip aperture in there, the main aperture, so it's fresh. Um, and that is the last one I have. However, there are about eight different used apertures in the box that could be cleaned with acetone and cleaned up and reused. Um, several of them are in pretty good condition. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna load a new sample in there and I'm going to show you how the EDAX works and also the backscatter operations, so bear with me. Okay, so this is our EDAX system. I'm just going to give this a quick pause.